being an MLB umpire seems like one of the worst jobs imaginable. Like, you do get sick union benefits, but I can't think of many professions where you're so universally disliked. Even most politicians are liked by about half of people, but umpires are basically a constant punching bag by nature. It's a thankless job where the best of the best are ignored and anonymous, while the most famous umpires are famous because, well, they suck. Generally, I'm pretty sympathetic to umpires, especially on ball and strike calls because it's a difficult job, made even harder by catchers trying to constantly fool you by framing pitches. But every once in a while, there's a call so outright terrible, or on such a big stage, that you just have to call it out for what it is. The most famous in recent memory is probably Jim Joyce's missed call on Armando Galarraga's perfect game. But Joyce owned up to his mistake, Galarraga forgave him, and everyone seems to have come out of it okay. They even wrote a book together, and their story in the book probably brought them more publicity than the perfect game would have. Today though, I want to talk about the worst strike call I've ever seen. Here's the pitch. It's pretty bad, right? Maybe objectively it isn't the worst, but when you consider it's the bottom of the ninth in a one-run game, with a great pitcher's milestone on the line, it definitely merits consideration. So let's set the scene here. On April 8th, 2013, Tampa Bay was in Texas for the first game of a three-game series. AJ Przinsky and Mitch Moreland gave Texas an early lead with home runs against Jeremy Hellickson. Going into the top of the ninth, the Rangers nursed a 5-3 lead and gave the ball to their closer, Joe Nathan. Nathan had a ton of success with the Twins, with five All-Star appearances, a Reliever of the Year award, and a career 232 ERA as a reliever. He converted the success into a lucrative two-year $14.75 million deal with the Rangers, who at the time were a perennial contender. Nathan entered the game with 299 career saves, looking to reach a milestone that only 30 pitchers have eclipsed in their career. He gave up a leadoff single to Jose Molina, who was later driven in by a Sean Rodriguez single to make it a one-run game. With the go-ahead run at the plate, Ben Zobrist stepped in. Now, I'd like to note that I love Ben Zobrist. If you follow this channel, you probably know I love utility guys, and Ben Zobrist is kind of the patron saint of super utility players. So Zobrist works the count full in a huge spot, and Nathan throws this looping curve. It's low and way outside, and I actually question whether it might be a changeup, since it seems to break to the arm side instead of the glove side like a standard curve. The pitch looks headed outside the second it leaves Nathan's hand, and catcher AJ Przinsky jabs at it to stop a pass ball. Zobris drops his bat to jog to first, and Rangers announcer Steve Busby calls outside ball four. Nathan looks away disappointed he let the hitter get away from him, but home plate umpire Marty Foster does not agree. He calls strike three as Ben Zobris puts his hands to his head in disbelief. Just watching it in real time, you can see the call is bad, but let's slow it down and see just how awful it is. Oh yeah, that's… that's not good. Here's umpire Marty Foster's zone he called that night courtesy of Brooks Baseball. Our pitch in question is this one right here, which is a pretty clear outlier, but I don't think this chart does a great job practically illustrating where the pitch actually was, so let's give it a go ourselves. Time to CSI this, let's zoom in enhance the picture, and add a scuffed strike zone. This frame appears to show right before the ball crosses the plate, and this frame appears to be right afterward. Let's split the difference between these two frames and say that the ball crosses the plate right about here. Now again, this strike zone and ball are super unscientific, and these camera angles make it hard to make measurements, so you shouldn't take this as serious research. But I want to try and estimate just how far out of the zone this pitch is, so let's do some napkin math. The front of home plate is 17 inches wide. Let's account for the angle of the camera and say the visible front side of the plate is about 16.5 inches, or 1.8 inches in my Photoshop here. Now we can sort of extrapolate the other distances based on this scale. Our approximation of the spot the pitch crossed the plate is 0.8 inches off the plate in the picture, which based on our scale is 7 and a third inches outside in real life. On the same scale, the pitch was about 3.4 inches low, which when we plug it into the handy dandy Pythagorean theorem is about 8 inches away from the bottom right corner of the zone. Obviously this is far from exact, but a range of somewhere between 7 and 9 inches gives us an idea of how bad the call was. 8 inches sounds bad, but what does it mean really? Let's look at some other terrible calls and some umpire heat map to see how often this type of pitch is called a strike. Jeff Sullivan's worst called balls and strikes articles are always a nice read, so let's look at the worst called strike from the first half of 2018, a sinker that's in a similar zone as Nathan's Curve. This sinker from Brad Ziegler is a pretty egregious call that is officially recorded as 8.2 inches out of the zone. By the numbers, this is probably slightly worse of a call than ours. But while definitely bad, this one's a lot more understandable. It's on a sinker from a submariner, a pitch that starts right towards the zone at a confusing arm angle then darts away, but at least looks like it could be a strike at one point. 
JT Real Muto also puts a pretty nasty frame job on it to make it at least look sort of like a strike. But Przinsky doesn't frame Nathan's pitch at all, and the curve never looks headed for the plate. Everyone on the field, including Nathan, gives up on this pitch the second it leaves his hand. In most seasons, the absolute worst called strike out of about 400,000 pitches not swung at is about 9 to 10 inches out of the zone. So Nathan's curve isn't quite the worst call ever, but being probably bottom 10 out of hundreds of thousands of calls is far from something to be proud of. Just for effect, let's look at some strike zone heat maps. I couldn't find one for Murray Foster, so we'll use Bill Millers, who's generally accepted to be a pretty decent umpire. The red denotes pitches that are almost always strikes, and the purple is pitches that are basically never strikes. Our estimate of where Nathan's curveball ended up is here. Literally off the chart, and it's not particularly close. If you had any doubt, the heat maps show this pitch was more than a bad call, it was a remarkably terrible call. All of this is independent of the context of the pitch, though. Most terrible strike calls come late in blowout games where the umpires understandably want to move the game along. But this one came in the ninth inning of a one-run game, with a tying run on base. Not even to mention it's somewhat of a milestone for Nathan on the line, one that's been overshadowed by this call from Marty Foster. Right before the full count pitch, Tampa Bay had an 8.7% chance to win the game, while obviously afterward they had a 0% chance to win the game. But had the pitch been called correctly and Zobrist walked, Tampa Bay's win probability goes up to about 13%. This single call from Foster had a 13% win probability change, or about the same as a solo home run in the sixth inning of a tie game. That isn't even all of it though. Win probability numbers don't take into account who's hitting or pitching. On deck was the best hitter on the Rays, peak Evan Longoria, who was already 3-for-3 three three that night. So you can understand why Ben Zobrist, generally accepted to be one of those mild-mannered people in baseball, who had a long career before his first ejection in 2018, gave Foster a piece of his mind immediately after the pitch. Joe Madden, who's not really known for his blow-ups, instantly stormed out of the dugout to bark at Foster. Unquestionably though, the best reaction was from Nathan himself. As Przinsky jogged to the mound to congratulate him, Joe simply vocalized what everyone else in the stadium was thinking. Wow. Nathan would later sarcastically say it was a strike all the way, before admitting he thought it was ball four instantly. Joe Madden grumbled, That cannot happen in a Major League Baseball game. That call cannot occur. Which, well, yeah, he's right. To Foster's credit though, he later admitted the call was wrong, so nice job there, credit where it's due. Hopefully you don't make any other disastrous calls in your career. Oh, no, Marty, you can't do that. Come on, man, learn your lesson. Stop screwing over my favorite players. So Marty Foster called a pitch about 8 inches out of the strike zone a strike, which would make it even worse than the first percentile of bad umpire calls. But he did it to end a one-run game, with a tying run on base and an MVP candidate on deck, to overshadow a milestone from one of the best relievers of the 2000s. To sum it all up, wow. Thanks for sticking around and watching me rant about one pitch for 8 minutes. If you're enjoying the content, it helps me out a ton to sub to the channel, and maybe check out my Twitter if you're interested. Making this video made me want to make a Ben Zobris video, so that's probably coming up next. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.